So is it climate change or is it an ice age that's headed our way? So many people are asking this right now. And if you look on the internet, there's all this stuff about the grand solar minimum. There's stuff about an ice age that's coming. And if you're in one of these areas where lately it's been really cold, lately you've been getting like snow in the middle of spring or, or early summer, you know, you might be asking yourself, are we headed for an ice age? And then you've got the other camp saying there's climate weirding happening. And when I wrote a paper in high school about the idea that uneven amounts of energy coming into any system will create chaos um, about how the ozone layers holes would allow excess energy into different areas making for more violent and more erratic, harder to predict weather patterns. We've got a whole lot of other things going on. We've got ocean currents slowing. We've got heat in some areas. We've got dryness in other areas. We've got a lot of violent movement of moisture. And we are seeing things really get unpredictable. And the thing is, when you look at the grand solar minimum argument that uh, the sun is connected to climate, it makes a lot of sense. And if you think about, you know, if you think about like the way ice ages work, um, they sometimes can just show up. And then there's these things called like um, mini ice ages. Have you heard about this? So in the middle ages between like the 1600s and the 1700s, there's like two different instances and there's like one around 1850, another instance where it got brutally cold and they called them a little ice age. Um, there was a year where for two years straight, it didn't stop raining and never got warm and the sun never came out. And basically they couldn't grow food um, the, the fields were all muddy and people just starved and suffered and it was brutal. And so there's these like weird weather things that happen on earth. And it's not like we can point to exact things, exact reasons why. I don't think we're ever going to be able to. Uh, it's too much, too complex of a system at this point, uh, especially now that it's unpredictable. <laughs> We've messed with it a lot. And so um, the thing is, yeah, we could have an ice age show up. Okay, so so if an ice age could show up, then um, then then what's going on with like people saying like global warming is a hoax and it's and it's the solar minimum and an ice age is coming. Well, that's where it gets a little bit thin because the reality is glo like global warming, is really climate change, because it's more complex than just global warming. And what it really is, is just localized desertification compounding on a global level. So what do I mean by that? You remove the soil, you remove the biodiversity, the trees, the plants, the animals, and then, and then the water, you remove those things and you get a desert. Desertification is not controversial, but it does change weather patterns. It does change local climates, and it does, when it's linking up on a global level, change global weather patterns. So we live in a plastic system, a plastic world that every little thing, you know, the butterfly effect, right? Every little thing affects something else. I, I, I really want to never throw out the baby with the bathwater when we're talking about global warming, turning into climate change, maybe turning into climate um, weirding. You know, I, I, I want to get back always to the, to the actual, to something that we all can agree on, to something that everyone's like, well, well yeah, of course, right? because that's undeniable. You remove those things, you create a new climate locally. You do it on a global scale, you create that globally. And we've done that, we've removed the forest globally. We, we, we are seeing the, uh, the sixth greatest extinction, mass extinction, so the biodiversity. Um, we're, we're seeing it, the, the water on the landscape, the animals and the plants are now in the sky and the water. That's the carbon and that's the excess moisture. That's what they are. And then most of climate change is powered by moisture. And it's the water vapor that's actually the strongest greenhouse gas. It's responsible for 90% of the effect. So we got to take these things back into the landscape. No doubt. But what happens if an ice age comes right now? 
So what if all these people are right? What if we have an ice age coming right now and we're about to head into like something like we had 10,000 years ago? Do you know what that was like? Have you studied that time period? Because I don't know if these guys have studied that time period, you know, from an anthropological, like, you know, perspective, because I have, you know, that's something, you know, that I've studied. Um, and I can tell you this, that it wasn't pretty. Um, and if it happened right now, we would be in all of, in extraordinarily a lot of trouble. So you're like, but Matt, we've gotten it so much warmer. Maybe we were doing this all on purpose the whole time, and and it's gonna come. It's not gonna like like combat the ice age and keep the ice age not as cold or something. No, 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 no. What would happen is it would um, lock up the moisture, and then suddenly the earth itself would dry out because the water would be tied up. Um, this is what happened last time. This is why we were, we were like in caves. This is why we were underground. This is why we hugged the water, hugged the areas that that were set, the few areas that were safe. Um, and they had uh, they had megafauna and megaflora. So what do I mean by that? They had giant plants and giant animals. And so in that time period, we, we, we could, you know, we could follow around these animals. We could act like scavengers. We could hide in the giant canopies of 150 to 300 foot tall, you know, canopies and trees and forests. There was all these mitigating factors. I mean, obviously it had to be a gradual shift for those areas that were well insulated. It's like, yeah, there's a cold snap happening, but in those areas with a gigantic canopy with those trees, there's going to be some time. So there's naturally uh, like, um, and not like this giant cold snap, but if there's not those canopies, if there's not those trees, and if you don't have those giant animals, the mastodons, the woolly mammoths, the woolly rhinos, the animals adapted to that, to that situation because we don't any longer. So people are trying to bring back to the permafrost, the animals, the herds, because they're gone. Um, that's what Pleistocene Park is all about. We could have like a crazy magnified uh, extinction event. So it's not even, it's not even, um, it's not even like either or, or they're combating each other. It's like they work together to do much more damage. So this idea that, that, that it's an either or is, is not looking at the, like the principles, the causes, the foundations aligned with both. And, and yeah, you know, the, the carbon trade, the carbon numbers, the, the carbon economy, there's a lot of loopholes, a lot of things where things can go wrong, a lot of areas where people can screw things up and really make it corrupt. No doubt, no doubt. I'm not, you know, discounting a lot of corruption around uh, people taking advantage of the fear and all the, 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 the worry around global warming, climate change, and all that, no doubt. But nonetheless, these things um, all have potential, um, like the Ice Age has potential to happen. All these climate disasters have potential to happen. Um, nonetheless, uh, we're desertifying the planet. We, we, we have evidence, plenty of evidence of that, sadly. We are losing our biodiversity, our plants and animals, no doubt we have evidence of that. But we also have amazing examples of regenerating large landscapes, bringing back biodiversity, endangered species from the brink. And we've recently been discovering extinct species almost like regularly. We're rediscovering extinct species in the wild. So we can help nature bounce, bounce back. Nature wants to bounce back. And we can make ourselves more resilient to natural climate change, like ice ages, mini ice ages, or large, because they do come. There's no denying the geological, geomorphological history of our planet. <laughs> so in that way, these folks are absolutely right. And then in that way, this grand solar minimum concept um, you know, if it proves to be true, we could be like able to predict our weather patterns, our, our seasons and all these things in a totally new way if we started more accurately tracking and, and watching our sun patterns. 
So there's a lot of edge. There's a lot of interesting things here, but but let's move forward with clarity, right? Let, let's get this right so that people can understand and make this something that can serve them and protect them, their family, and their community. <laughs> I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively.